Welcome to another GCSE Coast Explainer. This time we're going to be looking at hard, uh, hard and soft engineering as ways of managing the the coastline. Um, uh, you know, as a country, we face big choices over over whether or not to protect different parts of the coastline. Um, is the land valuable enough to be protected? Are the land uses on top valuable enough to to be protected? And there, local councils do things like shoreline management plans and cost benefit analysis, where they look at the costs of the works and the, the benefits that will be provided before they decide to, to act. And obviously with climate change and sea levels going up, that's going to pose big questions for our government and for local councils. So the first thing we'll look at is hard engineering. That's the use of artificial structures such as seawalls aimed at controlling the natural processes occurring at the coast. So it could be erosion, coastal flooding, those sorts of things. Um, and the idea would be using big structures of wood, concrete, steel to try and control them. So here you've got a picture of uh, sea defences at Redcar on the northeast coastline. Uh, so brand new seawall built by the by the council. Uh, artwork and benches used to sort of soften the impact of it, but effectively uh, it's got a recurved seawall designed to stop the sea, damaging the, the town of Redcar in the northeast of, of England. Here's some uh, sea defences in, in France, in La Faute Mer in France. Uh, so a lot of things, you know, you can see this big embankment here. Uh, you've got walkways on the top, uh, sediment on the top, but it's actually hiding uh, a huge amount of hard engineering underneath. So it's been softened, but uh, they used cranes to lever these big steel plates into place uh, that were concreted into the ground and then covered with with sediment and planting uh, to keep the sea out from the uh, from the settlement. OK, so sea walls, they are permanent concrete walls which protect low areas from erosion. Uh, they might be recurved like this to actually push the wave back out to sea and avoid uh, absorb the wave energy. And they're often multi-use because they've got a, you know, this one's got a walkway at the at the top. These the benefits of these are effective at protecting the foot of vulnerable cliffs or the top of the beach. The curved walls are more expensive, um, but can dissipate the energy from incoming waves better. As you can see there, they're very sturdy, so they have a life, long lifespan. And then multi-uses, they often have walkways along the top for people to walk along, but the costs, they're very expensive. Okay, there can be millions of pounds to construct. They're ugly or not, not aesthetically pleasing. And also seawalls have been what cause problems down current, so uh, the, the waves have more energy to pick up more sediment elsewhere, and that causes damage to other areas. Groins are long fences that we put at right angles to a beach. Um, to try and trap sediment moving from longshore drift. So you can see on this picture from Blythe, um, the beach is much higher on this uh, northern side or the left-hand side than it is on the right-hand side. Uh, so the idea is that they designed to interrupt longshore drift and catch sediment as it moves along the coastline, and that widens the beach, and that's key, because that larger beach can then ask a buffer against waves. It absorbs more of the wave energy, and then the coastline's not absorbing it. Uh, they're also good for tourism because they give you a nice wide beach, but the costs are that the areas down current are starved of sediment and that makes them more vulnerable to erosion. They're not particularly attractive or maybe a little bit more attractive than a, a big concrete wall. They can make the beach inaccessible because you can get a big gap on the down current side. So anybody with mobility problems would have problems getting from one side of the beach to the to the other. And they're expensive as well and need constant uh, maintenance because obviously you need pressure treated wood to put them into the seawater but even that can be damaged by wave crash and it can um, rot over time. The last type we're going to look at in terms of hard engineering is rock army. You can see some big huge big boulders here uh, so it's basically piling up big heavy boulders along the coastline to absorb the power of the waves and reduce erosion and again they absorb the wave energy They've got a cheaper cost than many other hard engineering strategies and they're relatively cheap and easy to maintain. But they're really unnatural and don't fit in with the geology of, of the cliff and the beach line. They can be very expensive to transport. And um, we'll have a look at gabions in a minute, but the metal in the cage can rust as well. So it's a, not as permanent a solution. OK, so that's, a, that's gabions at the coastline there. So you see you've got a steel metal cage with smaller rocks placed within them and those can be put in to hold back cliff lines and stop the waves beating against the the base of that cliff line. 
Soft engineering is different. It's a more sustainable approach to managing the coastline without the use of artificial structures. So you try to use more natural materials, um, but that often reduces the effectiveness of the strategy. So if you take beach nourishment, that's basically dredging sediment from one part of the coastline and uh, blasting it up onto the up onto the beach and then it gets reprofiled by by big big diggers and big bulldozers to try and give you a, an even surface to the beach so you can see there uh, sediment being blasted on and then it will be it will be reshaped the benefits of that are the, the additional sand and shingle makes the beach higher and wider it's cheaper than hard engineering and it can be shaped and reprofiled by diggers to change the shape and gradient of the beach and that makes it more effective at absorbing the wave's energy and if the sediment's locally sourced, it'll blend in with the beach, so that's good for tourists. However, that would need constant maintenance or else the new sediment will just be eroded by the sea. And it's not as solid or sturdy as hard engineering. Here's some beach nourishment up at um, New Biggin um, on the Northumberland coastline. You can see there they had a, they had a, they had a seawall, a curved seawall, then they blasted a load of sediment and actually the... Uh, the scheme up in New Biggin was actually too effective. It led to too much sediment uh, being accumulated. And it, these steps disappeared and so on, and a lot of sediment had to be removed from the road behind. Another type of soft engineering is realignment and management retreat. So this is where we basically accept that the coast, vulnerable areas of the coastline are going to be um, inundated by the sea, and we allow the sea to do that in a controlled manner. So we monitor areas to check that nothing valuable is at risk of being lost. It's cheaper, we can, so we can allow cliff erosion to occur in areas of low value farmland and just compensate farmers for their losses rather than construct expensive coastal defences. I like this area here, it can be beneficial to plants and animals by providing new habitat. However, we lose land, the human cost can be greater than just financial, for example family homes and land can be lost which can be very upsetting. And then you've got the costs of compensating landowners. So you see a diagram of that there. And then the last soft engineering is to build up sand dunes and, and plants along the coastline in a process called dune regeneration. So you can see that here, fenced off, trying to keep people out, planting of coastal plants to try and build up the sand dunes. And there, that strengthens the dunes and prevents coastal retreat. It gives us a big buffer between the land and the sea. We use fencing to trap the sand, plant in marram grass and encourage the dune formation and that helps protect those systems which protect the coastline and absorb storm and wave energy. It's a lot cheaper than hard engineering and the added bonus is it helps to maintain the ecosystems of the area. However, it's time consuming to plant the marram grass and fence areas off and it's much less effective than hard engineering schemes so big, big winter storms can wash those dunes away. So in terms of tasks, get some definitions down of the key terms, soft engineering, hard engineering and manage retreat. Watch these brilliant time for geography videos and answer the questions. You can have a look on the on my website um, on that coastal management page and go through the pros and cons of the different types of defence. So you've got a, a chart to go through how it works, positives and negatives for each for each one. And then evaluate the view that only hard engineering can be successful at managing the coastline. So we'll finish up with a little stupid geography joke. How did the seawall collapse? It cracked under peer pressure.